Seven footers, welcome back amidst these crazy times. Jenna Lemoncelli here. Gerard here. Good. We got some return guests. Yes, we <laughs> are not. We are not alone. Okay, guys, we are here with the two gentlemen who run the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast. Wow. That's right. They are gentlemen. I feel very distinguished. <laughs> I like that. Yes. I mean, Dexter, Dexter and probably Brian. gentlemen. Brian. <laughs> he's, more of a, he's more of a hooligan, I would say. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually remarkably pretty gentle. I don't know where all this is coming from. How can you love and you guys are already fighting. Yeah. The, 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 now, <laughs> my, reasoning for, my reasoning for that is not suitable for this podcast discussion we're about to have, so let's what move on. You see? You see? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is what I'm saying. The fun, the fun never stops. Listen. <laughs> Let's have some fun today, but first let's do a quick vibe check and see how everyone's doing amid the coronavirus pandemic. I know we're all in the New York, New Jersey area, so how we doing, guys? I'm holding up okay. Uh, the week was a little rough start for me. I found out I had strep throat, um, so that sucked. Um, oh, haven't my lost goodness. my voice or anything. Yeah, but look, like Brian told me, I talked to Brian on the phone yesterday. Strep, though, is a lot better than getting that Rona. So I'll take well, that. I'll take that, that all day. It very I'm true, okay. but like most people, you say that, and I'm sure they're, like, running. Yet, we're your friends, yeah. so we got you. We're not going to be there. I'm staying away from the people, man. <laughs> staying away from the people, resting. So I'm, I'm good, though. Right. I'm good and blessed. B, how, how you holding up, man? I mean, I'm just checking you, on you, people. You, you, you was a little shook in the beginning. Yeah, not because, uh, I mean, I feel like we all were, and still are to some degree but at, at yeah. this point i'm a lot more mellow now than i was last week where last week it was sort of not new but it was still fresh mm -hmm. and it was still like on the uprising and it's it is now but now i've sort of figured out a formula of okay i'm gonna watch cuomo every day and then i'm done with the political shit until the evening like i'm because just you can't you can't consume yeah. too much it gets yeah you heavy can't. On that, that's really yeah heavy. that's what i figured out it's like i'll do cuomo in the morning and then I'll get cliff notes of whatever happens at 6 or 7 p.m. And then, you know, go about my day and just work around that. As far as the work portion of it, I was working from home pretty much primarily beforehand. I mean, there were going to be some other things that were going on that have to get pushed back now because of this virus. But mm -hmm. that, as is the case with millions and millions of people, probably even more than that across the world. So, you know, it kind of is what it is. You figure out ways to keep it pushing. And that's pretty much it. Indeed. Absolutely. And Jenna, you, it looks like you're in a in a different location today. I mean, I know you're in your bunker, but you're in a different part <laughs> of the bunker. I am. I am. You've been here before. You know, there's many yes. options to pick from with all mm -hmm. the different rooms with the girls mm -hmm. and everything. But yeah, let me, no, let me, let me tell you all about that house. That house is like, <laughs> I, I think I've, I've said on multiple occasions. It's a good place to be quarantined. I mean, yeah, it yes, is. for it sure. Is. It's definitely a good place to be quarantined. Okay. <laughs> but no, it's, it you know, is. It, it sometimes resembles a frat house on occasion. Oh, like, my Why does everybody uh. use the F word like that when they talk about my, my rent? Okay. No. Oh, that's a common thing? Wow. You know, it except, may have come up not, a few it's, it's, it's girls, not dudes. Times. That's, the thing. that's, no, that's better, Gerard. You haven't been here. We've gotten a coffee table. Thank We've you, Brian. A I, I, I understand that. So you've upgraded. You've upgraded things. You know what, Dexter? Who wants to be in a frat house this with dudes? What, Dexter, this is what I do love about you, dear. Yeah. You haven't said anything the entire time. You haven't slandered me like these two have or left. No, no need I'm to. I'm not slandering you. you. Who's slandering? You've I, just com I just I complimented you. Just all love. I don't see where this is coming from. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. All right, listen, boys. We, we are all, all good, though. I, I'm, I'm good in the bunker. Everybody's straight. Listen, yeah. we got to take care of each other. I, I really hope when this is over, we all get better and treat each other a lot better than we have been. Like, not 100%. us. I mean, I'm talking about, like, the larger world. Like, we good with each other. I mean, oh, out okay. there. You yeah, know what I yeah. mean? Like, this is, this is wild. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah no, and, and, and and frankly, I hope that I mean New York is going to peak soon, which means we might get over it soon. I guess, I but so. that's still you I know. 
I hope. He, that peak I is mean, looking we, we, serious. We're going we, we, we to get into some people who I have some ire for in a minute, but go ahead. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Sound yeah. like Brian. To, <laughs> to personally get ready for this first topic that we're going to open up with, I all I had to do was really go to Gerard's Twitter and uh, check out <laughs> his I'm opinions just, on top of the news today. coming in. So I got a two for one special. Hit the Twitter, got the news, and then got Gerard's take. So I'm going to intro this topic and let you boys go rogue here because it is something that's crazy going around the league. All right. We have, you know, obviously these billion billionaire owners and Gerard calls it trying to get off the hook from paying their employees, but they're all coming up in different kind of ways of how they're handling their own organizations, whether they're cutting salaries or they're laying people off either this or that. So right now let's get into, you know, Josh Harris, David Blitzer here. Now, we have these billionaire owners. We're just coming out with the Sixers news. Gerard, tell me how we can start this here. Because I know you have a lot of things we want to get to in this topic. I mean, you know, to, to set it up, right? And you guys are familiar with the story, I'm sure, right? Uh, yeah. Josh, Har- uh, Josh Harris and, and Blitzer, the Harris Blitzer Sports Entertainment Group, owns the 76ers, the Devils, all of those that, that conglomerate there. Yep. He said that he requested that uh, workers take a 20% pay cut, right? Yeah. Um, initially, and then you know, and then the hourly people weren't going to get paid for the rest of the season as the games went on. And yo, mm-hmm. between Harris and Blitzer, they have a net worth of over a combined five billion dollars. Like, and I want to be very clear about something. I love Joel Embiid, and props to him. I'm very happy that Joel's like, yo, I'm gonna get five hundred thousand dollars, help you people stay on your feet. Listen, I love what all these players are doing. And it's cool, and I love it. For anyone who follows this pad, this pod, you guys know me. You read my work. My bio says something very clear in it. If you root for billionaire owners over millionaire athletes, you are part of the problem. Okay, and that's where we are right now. Like I don't understand how it is that people cannot conceptualize what is going on here. And this is an American problem, Dexter. You and I talked about this a little bit a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. And part of it is the conceptualization process, right? Our whole lives, we understand conceptually what millionaire is because million means you're rich, right? Everyone thinks once I become a millionaire, that means I'm rich, right? And there's an extent that is true, right? You collect the millions and millions, you are rich. But people cannot conceptualize what billions is. Billions, like, you can't get rid of that. Like, it's impossible. <laughs> like, I put, I put something in the chat to, to you guys the other day. I'm like, go ahead, try to spend five billion dollars. Go ahead. Like you can't buy no you can't buy no teams or nothing like that. Just try to spend five billion dollars. You you can't how many cars are you gonna buy? How much clothes are you gonna buy? That money doesn't run out. It is so much. And the fact that these clowns are out here being like, nah, man, we gotta, be, we gotta cut your salary. We can't afford to pay you if you make it twenty five dollars an hour. It's like, really? Because why? What? You don't uh you don't wanna not what 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 in your lifestyle do you not want? Because by the way. Nothing in these billionaires' lifestyles will have to change at all. Literally nothing if they pay their workers. Life will go on exactly as how it's going on now. Yep. The only thing that's going to change yes. is potentially their, their ranking on the Forbes billionaire list. They may drop from, like, number that's five. Okay. And- well, to give it a little more context for a second before Gerard head pops off a little bit here. <laughs> now, really quick. I, no, Gerard, I agree with you, dear. I agree with you. But just to, for some more background here, we have Harris, who, you know, he planned the 20% reduction on the employee salaries, right? He comes, now he initially planned to do that in order to, you know, avoid layoffs, keep the benefits for the companies, what, over a thousand employees, I think it said. But then he backtracks, right? Mm-hmm. And he says, after, you know, a discussion with the public and the employees, I've made the wrong decision. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. apologizes and- to staff, apologizes to fans. He calls it a mistake. So yeah. after the backlash, now, so where are we at now? Why yeah, do you see, think he backtracks? Yeah, but see, that's the problem, Jenna. That's the problem. <laughs> you, can't, you can't, after being shamed, that's like you're cheating and your significant other walks in with you in the middle of the act and you're like, yo, my bad. My it was bad. a mistake. Like- I just happened to fall into this. No, no, no <laughs> but wait, 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 hold on. That happened in Lucky Number Slevin. You ever seen that movie before? No. <laughs> except, Where except, was 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 the saying that it was a mistake acceptable? That's so, the ba- so basically the dude was hitting the girl from the back, and then oh, her man walked in. Her man walked in, and then she turned around and said it was an accident. 
So I'm just saying, uh, it happened in a movie. Okay. Right, okay. it happened in a movie. <laughs> I don't I know. But after that, I don't know. If I'm the only one that's seen this, of course. Of course, I. Am. But I'm, what I'm saying here, <laughs> what I'm saying here, guys, is nobody's buying that, and I'm not Nobody. buying the backtrack, right. Jenna. Right? I'm not buying. Yeah, the, yeah. We made a mistake. These guys are billionaires. So let me just harp on one thing, and I'll get right back out of this really quickly. Gerard talks about all the access to all the stuff these guys have, how we don't understand how much money that is. You know oh. what? The five billion dollars net worth can buy you. Some PR people, some advisors to tell <laughs> yeah. this is a bad idea. Yes, How about yes. That? Well, here's the thing, really quick, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but I think it's also important to note, too, there were several Sixers and Devils executives, including GM Elton Brand, who did vote, agreed to the 20% salary reduction. So not one person that has a you know high enough title stepped up and said, hello, mm -hmm. this is going to be very bad from a PR standpoint. This is going to bury us. I'd like to think some of those people, I wonder if they got promises <laughs> to get some money on the back end. Mm -hmm. Little kickback. Yeah, man. Because that's something I'm wondering if that happened. Because I'll tell you what, if I was out to answer brand, I'm not giving up 20% of my salary. I wish my job would come and tell me now to give me 20% of my salary. Even now, I don't <laughs> like, there's going to be a fight about it. I'm not going to be like, hey, let's do this. You know what I'm saying? I understand people need jobs and everything out here, but I'm just saying, like... Where you at, B? I, I just yeah, have where a, you at? Yeah, I just have a general problem with... Uh, billionaires? That's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just how... just generally how they're going about their business but and like not even here but you're you're seeing different you're seeing extensions of this just nationwide even yeah. as far as you know uh 45 trying to reopen the country and all the business people 45. the ceos and and they're like yeah yeah we want to be back by easter you know we want to be back in time easter. for church the and and the problem is they're also bringing religion into it because they're trying to use religion and say oh we're going to bring it back in time for Easter. This way, everything could be so normal uh, going forward because people are so worried about the economy. And in this case, it's the same thing where people are just so worried about their money and, you know, kind of to Dexter's point, staying where they want to be at the Forbes list and things like that. It, it's just, I, I, I like that NBA players are stepping up and donating, like Joel Embiid and Zion Williamson, but they, like, they, they, they shouldn't have to do that. Like, even, uh, yeah. even, what is it? A hundred thousand dollars is part of their salary, right? Mm -hmm, what's mm -hmm. the what's their what's Zion Williamson's hundred thousand dollar equivalent if he were a billionaire? Exactly. It would be what, like a million dollars? Like it, the owners, it's... the owners, like like to Gerard, to your point, if you have a billion dollars, it's very hard to spend. If you give away a one million dollar, a two million dollar, even a five million dollar donation. It's Ain't really you're not yeah, you're not taking a hit. Your spot yeah, on the Forbes list is gonna be the same, <laughs> especially if you and all your counterparts make those donations, as you probably should. Like that's what really you should be spending your money on. Like now we're at a legitimate crisis, right? People should be spending their money helping out hospitals, trying to research and things like that. People yeah. should be putting their <laughs> money forward like people in the NBA are trying to do. The problem is yeah. the people with a lot of money aren't doing that. And that's well, why you could only move forward to a certain extent. Speaking of people with a lot of money, so before we officially torch the Sixers, are they challengeable <laughs> after co-owner Michael Rubin comes out and takes accountability for the decision that they made, yeah, which yeah. they admitted was later wrong. He said, quote, I'm a strong believer when you get something wrong, you must learn from it and fix it. That's exactly what happened here. Truly appreciate everyone's feedback. It was helpful. Now let's beat COVID-19 so we can get back to some level of a normal life and play basketball, end quote. And I'll say this about Ruben. Ruben does a lot of stuff with Meek and the Reform Alliance. And, and you know, Ruben's generally mm. interested, interested mm. in... <laughs> the betterment of society right to a certain extent now but when it comes to making those kinds of decisions ruben is a limited partner harris and blitzer are the True. major partners so mm -hmm. ruben ain't the dude being like yeah we do it ain't that that's not how it works 
So, Harris and Blitzer are the ones that decide and make the deal because they are the co-owners. He's a limited partner. Yeah, a fractional ownership, but not anywhere near the level of what Harris and Blitzer have. He also great, wouldn't be the first point. billionaire. He also wouldn't be the first billionaire to sort of use Meek Mill to get uh, street credibility. So well, and, that's, and, that's, and we that's something that we're seeing there also. So and I question. Robert so Kraft you can do that. You can also question uh, how much he actually buys into his own public statement, which you normally do with billionaires anyway. How old is he also? I, I, like that matters, Ruben, yeah. Ruben, Ruben's in his forties. I, I, I will okay. say this. So maybe he, maybe he could grow from this. Because if he, Not if you told that. me he was seventy, I'm like, nah, come on, man. Like he, Ruben, the, what what he does with Meek and the report, and I, I've been to some of their events. Ruben, see, and again, I don't know him personally. I've chatted with him a couple times, just like in those settings. He seems like mm-hmm. he genuinely cares about prison reform and these types of things. I hope and so. It's funny because he had a conversation with Meek, and Meek would tell him about, you know. We what we know, guys, is two Americas, and Ruben would sit there and be like, "What?" And Meek would be like, "Yes, yeah." That's, yeah. that's, that's how it goes, like on, that. on yeah. these sides, on this side of the tracks, my man. He said and Meek just, would say things, and he'd be like, "Huh?" Yeah, it's just this whole surprise. Look, Ruben might not have grown up. up around those same sort of, you know. So oh, well, I could understand does. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right. <laughs> I, I there's different parts of Philly, also. <laughs> I will say this, and I don't want to get overly political but this needs to be said mm-hmm. i'm not a communist i'm not a socialist however unregulated capitalism is mm-hmm. a problem because this is what we have right now right Great. and it creates this situation whereby we the body politic right the, the masses which by the way people when you think about voting and voting blocks <laughs> we the 99 percent, are more than the one percent if we all will just get out of our own way and realize we all, the 99, have much more in common with each other than that 1%. But there's a segment of us 99% that think, oh, no, we're closer to those billionaires. You're not. Okay? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know how to tell you. You're not. You're much closer to the homeless person that you step over on your way to wherever you're going than you are to them. Trust me, and I promise you that. But the yeah. problem is, with the as a society... We abhor poor people. We blame them for being poor. And if we, it's like, oh my God, I don't want to be that. And we shun them. And this is, and, and now look, look where we're at now. And so we consistently do things that are in our, against our own self interest, right? Things that actually hurt us when it matters. Not saying that anyone on this call is homeless, but you consistently, we worship and give wealth and such a high pedestal in this country that we, it's, oh yeah, well, those guys can do whatever because they're wealthy. Why? Why should they not have to pay their fair share? We're not talking about things where we got to bail out the government and give give these companies trillions or billions of dollars. The whole stimulus will add up to trillion dollars. And we're saying that these companies, these Fortune 50 companies, and for those of you that don't know, Fortune 50 means the top 50 companies in the Fortune 500 who have market caps in the billions. They don't have cash on hand? Oh, no problem. The government will give you some cash on hand. But God forbid we want universal income or $2,000 for family. No, why don't you have three months of savings? I'm sorry, excuse me? I need to have three months of savings. But this company with a $10 billion market cap, they're not supposed to have cash on hand? Tell me how that works. Yeah, and then you got, you got the situation like the Sixers where they're not even caring about paying people for three months so right. they can have three months of savings. <laughs> like, what, 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 is going, what are we doing out here in these streets? Right. So, you know, the problem, the thing, I'm glad we're talking about this. I'm glad you guys chose to talk about this on this particular podcast. The thing that concerns me, guys, is that after this happens and this moves on, and this is, they kind of got shamed for a day, that people will forget about this. I'm okay. always going to be looking at those owners with a side eye, but people are going to forget about this all the time. Yes, 100%. Owners, owners got to do better. You know, if I was Silver, I wish he could. I wish he could find him for this. That'd be nice. You should find him like $5 billion. That'd be nice. Now, um, I'm looking, I'm trying to look it up here too, but did Joel Embiid pledge that before or after they came out with this decision? I believe that Joel was. Was he after? I just, I just it was around the same because, time. It was, it was around he, the same time. In his tweet, he talked about how he was glad they got it right. And they were doing a complete 180. He actually said that in his tweet. So I, okay. it was kind of the same time. So I could Going be wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like, really, you got Joel Embiid has got to like, you're, you're come you're in and up. pick up the pieces a little bit. I mean, in a way. Where are you yeah. At? I mean, what, what which happening? again, which again, I'm not against that. But at the same time, yeah. it's like the the people with the real billionaire money, they should be stepping forward more than they, they are. are. And, yes. And again, it's this idea about the wealthy class and 
what we allow them to get away with. And look, it's criminal, right? The, for a country as advanced as we are, this huh. – We're a third world Rona, country these days, Gerard. <laughs> but, okay, you, you can say that. In terms of GDP <laughs> and wealth, we are number one. How is it? How is it that this country with all that money and this Rona comes out and we're like, oh, no, man, we can't test people. What? That's that again. I am no medical expert, obviously, but that was what I was thinking a little bit too. I was like, "Wow, like, we are China for, advanced. No, like they got drive-through testing." Well, the thing is, what think about it though? We <laughs> have like literal drones flying through the air. We're creating cars that can drive without people. So you're telling me Rona comes in and tries to swipe us out like the apocalypse, and we can't do shit? Nope. Because there's a the there's but there's a lot of money and death. Yeah, that's yes, why, yes. but that's why, and and that's why people are saying like, oh, you know, it's one percent, two percent. We could just keep the economy going, and whoever dies dies. We can yeah, just keep it going. Because guess what? Because it ain't them gonna be dying. That's why they don't care. They're like, we good. We quarantined in our bunker somewhere mm-hmm. on our private island. We're straight. <laughs> so one of them needs to die. Then we'll probably get some shit started. Listen, wow. did I, I say that I out loud? <laughs> like <laughs> but, you know, no, 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 no. but here's the thing here's the thing about what you just said there it's not and i understand what you're saying brian it's not about wishing death upon somebody right. it's no kinda, it kind of speaks to more of what gerard was saying earlier and this fascination that we have with celebrity and wealth and that's when it'll get the attention of people sadly yes. that's more of the problem so so you saying that out loud i think actually brings more attention to what gerard is saying which is mm-hmm. we care more when it happens to somebody who's bigger yes yeah. you no know, that's a huge yes. part of the problem and, and, and the larger did you notice go ahead go ahead go ahead john well i was just saying did you notice to your point and gerard's point um tom hanks and rita wilson <laughs> came out with their coronavirus announcement on the same night as the nba uh, mm-hmm. suspending the season because that was the first night that we found out about Rudy Gobert and that's when it like literally shit hit the fan well you like I mean? with the public realizing wow mm-hmm. this is something it's real because we feel like as though we are attached or we know these figures these celebrities, celebrities. Y'all don't know them. Like, if you if you ever wrote a book titled American Ignorance right at the top of page one would be like oh something's <laughs> happening in China so it's not gonna happen to me so people don't care about something until it gets to them and when the uh-huh. coronavirus in general was just going on in other places people here were just like oh that ain't happening here so we don't care and then when it comes to New York and when it comes to LA People in Connecticut are like, oh, you know, whatever. West Virginia, oh, you know, whatever. And people only care when it finally gets to somebody that they care about, and that's too late. That's why mm-hmm. people are trying to be proactive about this. And that oh. sort of brings us back to this whole Joel Embiid thing, somehow. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of no, course. It, it, it's, it just, it's a sad situation. And, and the other part that makes me concerned is, Obviously, there's all the economic fallout, right? Look, what's mm. going to end up happening is when people stop having access to money and they got to pay their rent and they got to get food to feed their kids, yo, they're going to get that stuff done by any means necessary. This is what happens, okay? Like, it's a known fact. Most crimes that occur are yeah. crimes of necessity, not crimes of passion, right? If I got kids and they starving and they got to get milk and bread, guess what? I'm robbing that store, getting that milk and bread. That's what's happening. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's going to be a constant debate. It's going to be a constant thing, but it's never going. It's not going to end for a long time, right now. So we just got to take it day by day. Right, um, boys? you know, I just again, I I really hope that things can change around for the better because. It, there's so many things that we can we can get into here. Universal basic income, I mean universal healthcare. There's there's so much that you see that is wrong with the system. That is on it's on blast, right? Everything's on front street right now. And I I hope that as a collective, as a society, because it's gonna be the politicians. As a collective, are we gonna be like, hey man, we gotta fix this? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I know the answer to that because you know human history tells me one thing, but we'll see. <laughs> Hey, hey, any last words, guys? But I do think Gerard to respond to that. I do think this is different. So I'm at least optimistic that some people like this, this could be like, I can see a world where even, even if it's a small percentage, this could be a breaking point for some people. It's like, all right, like, nah, this is, this is a little too serious now. 
Like you have you have dude out here saying you got to take this drug and this oh, drug. Someone in Arizona actually does it and then dies. You mean to tell me that family's still going to abide by the things that he stood for? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> I think I think little things like that are going to add up. And, you know, we'll ultimately we'll see what happens the rest of the year, I guess. Brian, that's how we keep you around, man. You got that youthful optimism, man. You young. You still like, you know what? I'm hopeful. Wow, that's weird. You never say that about me, Gerard. And Brian and I are the same age, so. I mean, I'm I mean, slightly no, younger. <laughs> <laughs> Very slightly. Wow. To bust Gerard. You guys know. You guys know the blueprint already. Because okay. you're more, you're more mature than me, so I have to point that out. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yo, guys, we, I don't we know. We some, some seven footers after dark, and I'm gonna let y'all into some some Ooh. Wait, no. Be in the group quick. text for that one. <laughs> no, we could just okay. keep doing the Skype call. We could just not real record quick, it and quick. don't put it out. <laughs> I'm down for that. So you, you mentioned Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson, Jenna. Yes. Did you see, and we got to talk about this, did you see uh, Rita Wilson rapping along to um, Naughty by Nature's, uh, oh God, which song was it? Was it OPP? Was it OPP? Or was, was it? it? I'm hey, asking. No, I didn't no. see this. It wasn't OPP. It was Hey oh. Ho. It was a, uh, uh, no, I haven't. That sounds like something. Video that? That, see, that sounds like something I don't want to see. Yeah, me, me also. It is. Me too. It is a I very interesting wait. thing. Um, she doesn't well, like, doesn't, miss, uh, does, doesn't, yeah, doesn't miss no, any words. Mm-hmm. But oh. <laughs> yeah, but look, I just hope she's feeling better. Yes, <laughs> <She is>, apparently, <laughs> apparently she's feeling, obviously she's yeah. she rap to naughty, so she's good. Um. If she's rapping, it's, it's, she's definitely it's this, feeling it's better. It's this weird thing because we do this thing when certain people can rap like the easiest bars or certain people can dance. It's this very strange <laughs> that happens and we get, we get out of control about it. I don't know. I just want to throw that out there. Not throwing any shade at anybody. Just... Just saying. Just Look, saying. I, I hope, I hope, you got something to say about that? I hope she's recovering, and that's all I got to say. No, <laughs> it looks, it, it's kind of like what you're describing is kind of like when people get excited about uh, PDA content, dunk contest. It's the same thing. It's like the people get excited yes. about that because they're like, oh man, I just, yeah. So. <laughs> and, we'll, and, and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> yes. We will leave it at that. All right. We are all out of time, guys. Thank you for hanging with us, Dexter and Brian, from the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast. It's a dope podcast. It's a good listen. Check them out. They're our good friends. We support them. They support us. And yes. we love having you guys on. Oh, tell, tell the people where they can find y'all, man. Yeah, tell us. Find us on Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, AHTT podcast. That's the best way to find us. Keep up with everything that we're doing. What well, you said. Love That's it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know where to find us at JS Hector at Jenna Lemon Selling, Twitter, Instagram at Seven Footers Pod, and we'll see you guys next episode. Peace. All right, thanks, guys. Spent a couple years out here with these raps Tryna have a plan that we may come true Plotted some jobs but I ain't hit back I don't wanna trap what some man gon' do Chevy told me come